Hello and welcome to this live painting demo. Um, tonight I'm doing a painting of a young model named Hannah Morgan and I found her image on originally on Pinterest and then I um, then I found additional images on Instagram and I contacted her there and um, asked permission uh, to paint her painting. Also asked the photographer, Yana Bardadim, uh, to for permission, which is usually a, a good idea. Um, please let me know if um, you can hear me. Okay, I am um, always good to have a little feedback to see if the feed is um, coming through. And um, let me see. It says there's two people on. Okay, so I'm going to, assuming this is working, I'm going to start painting. Um, actually, let me just quickly bring up my YouTube account just to make sure. Never hurts, right? And um, so I can actually see what you guys are seeing. And then I will get started. So just give me a second. YouTube is behaving. Yep. Because I don't see. Oh, okay. I see the cat moving in the background. That means should be working. And yep. Now I see I got a notification that I'm live. Your channel. Okay, oh, there it is. Come on, be nice. And everything is up and running. Okay, so I can get started on this. I have uh, two webcams going, one that you can see my palette, um, have a full spectrum of colors and oh, I can hear my sound coming through now. I'm going to turn that off so it doesn't distract me. And, um, and then I have another webcam that's on my panel so you can see as I'm painting. And I'm just going to get a little bit of just a little bit of gray mixture going. I'll put a little bit of, uh, of the naphthal red in there just to have a little bit of color to work with. And I have a nice soft brush. I may have to run into the other room for a second. I realized that I left my um, Gamsol, which I use as a thinner in the other room, and I'm, my, I'm a little bit low. So I'm just going to get sort of the basic outline here of what's going on. And usually I, sometimes I measure first and then paint, sometimes I paint and then measure. And there's, I need to be a fairly exact, um, with some of this just because it's um, cropped so tightly. If I'm a little bit off, then the proportions are going to be quite a bit off. Yeah, I can see I forehead is somewhere around here. Here. Cuts in kind of high. So I can look uh, across there, sort of the diagonal where the no base of the nose is the ear actually starts up higher and there's a little bit of um, tilt of the head so we see underneath her nose so I know that I also um, I'm looking actually straight across at the chin I don't really see underneath her chin but I do see underneath her nose and partially it's a little bit pushed up by her hand but part of it is that our perspective um, we're fairly close to her so we are looking uh, our eye level is probably around her the base of her chin or so but we can still see up um, towards her mouth okay I know that my proportions are a little bit off here so I'm going to start to do a little bit of measuring to see where things are after I get a little bit further, then I can start to look back and forth between the reference photo and the painting, and then I can really do some fine adjustments that way. But I have to get a little bit down somewhat accurately before I can get to that spot. 
this is just my own personal approach. A lot of people, they can either trace from the photo or do a lot of measuring um, and do uh, pencil drawing or sometimes the vine charcoal will come in or sometimes do a complete underpainting before they come in and do the the final layers of painting that um, it's not doesn't really work that well for my process I have a little bit of ADHD so I um, I like to get very quickly to start to see what it is that I'm doing and then um, slowly over time make refinements putting a little bit of green in into the shadow I took Yana's um, photo and um, and I darkened the colors a little bit I gave it a little more contrast in the face and that just from a perspective of being able to paint it her photograph had this flesh tones fairly pale and that would have been much more of a challenge to, to paint. So I'm just giving myself a little bit of more room in terms of the values to to be able to paint it. Um, so not exactly what um, she intended as the photographer for for um, us usage in fashion or for her own art. Um, I needed to just change it a little bit. Okay, so I just need to get a little bit of measurement going here. The base of the nose from the top, I'm just doing a quick measurement there. And I can see I need the base of the nose just a little bit lower. So I'm going to pull everything down here and I'm going to wipe a little bit of the these marks out a little bit so I can see it better. Okay, I see someone chiming in. Uh, Joy Lamb. Hello, AJ. Um, hi, Joy, and welcome. And uh, if you can, please let me know where you're watching from. I always love to know uh, where in the world you are. Since I do get people watching from all over the place, it's always a bit of a surprise to me. Um, the internet seems to f make the world a very small place. Okay, let's do a, a little bit of measurement of the eyebrows now. So I can see where I need to move those to. So her eyebrow is actually right about there. Again, I'm going to come in with a little bit of lighter color to wipe out my initial mark so I can see it a little bit better then her hairline comes up pretty quickly and then actually the top of her head is much lower than what I have it and that's probably what's throwing me off a little bit <clears throat> You have to forgive my uh, voice is a little scratchy. I've been a little bit light on sleep. I had recently returned from Ecuador and um, ended up getting in at four in the morning and then I had to be at um, work um, that same day. So I got into the office around uh, 9.30. So. Um, and so the, a day later, I'm still not completely caught up on sleep. So that's making uh, my voice a little bit uh, rough around the edges. Okay, now I can start to see a little bit better where I am. Do you want to do, I think I have her forehead over just too far. Now that, now that I've committed myself a little bit, now I need to move everything over a bit, which is okay. I can just... Um, copy some of these lines. I know this is probably not the most efficient way to do this, but hey, it's my way. So I'm just moving everything over. That means her eye. Let me 
me see. Actually, just get an indication of the side of the nose here. Somewhere there. Side of the nose and light marks. And the eye is pretty close to the right place. So I'm going to get another measurement here from the corner of the eye. It's right there. And then the other corner is right about there. So again, I'm going to obliterate some of those marks. It just looks like a huge old mess right now, but I'm getting there. <clears throat> just throwing in, I've done a mixture here. I have a bad habit of not putting enough yellow in my painting, so I did a mixture of a uh, light mixture of yellow and white together to give me a, a warmer white that I can use so that um, I don't have to fear going, um, getting a little bit of yellow and having it be way too intense. And so this is a way of kind of muting that yellow. I have a very intense palette and a lot of people will use either a Naples yellow or a, a um, under painting white or lead white to get sort of that warmth. And I, um, I didn't have that in my palette. So I'm just mixing a little bit of the, Hansa yellow with white just to get the, uh, a warmer version of my white so that my painting doesn't um, go too cool which is sort of my um, kind of the problem that I, I tend to have. So I can use a lot of that yellow and white mixture in the beginning and that will give me kind of a sort of that warmish over t undertone that I'm looking for. Let's just get a few marks, kind of get start to see where I am. And the lips, I see it looks like a fairly cool or towards purple um, red, so I have a little bit of the Lizarin Crimson, a touch of the Dioxazine Purple, and a little bit of white in there. If I need to dull it up later, I can. And the inside of her mouth is kind of a pure mixture of those without the white. I'm going to throw in a touch of black just to kind of see it there. Let me indicate where the nostril is a little bit better. Okay, going a little bit too thick there. I want to try to keep it thin and controlled in the beginning and I can come in with thicker paint more towards the end. And I want a little bit of that red. We're getting a a color change as we go into the shadow. Um, you can see the more, a little more red showing up as we go in from the half tone in the light part of the face into the darker shadow. You, you can just see a little bit more color in there. This is where I want to have a little more yellow. And let's tighten up that eyebrow a little bit here. Let's bring it down a little bit tighter to the eye. And I want actually a fairly cool white in that reflection here, or the highlight. And in that measurement here looks really wide. Whereas I look in the reference, this distance is much closer. So I'm going to put a little bit of more information there so I can see it. And so yeah, I'm having that highlight really a lot closer and then I can bring the corner of her eye over just a little bit. her forehead over to I'm getting some of that really dark green I just I need to make it a little bit grayer though so it's not gonna be that strong a color okay and 
I think what's going to help me here visualize is getting some of the dark color that's in the hair and that's going to be a warm black color so I'm going to get black I'm going to throw a little bit of a naphtha red in there that'll give me kind of that warm brownish black color that I'm looking for and part of this is just so I can start to see um, where I am here and where I am is a little bit off still gotta move that over let's get that measurement so we have the forehead coming in right around here so let's just move that all that over Oops, tripping over my own cord here, sorry. Okay, still looks like a mess, but that's okay. I'm just finding my landmarks. I can clean a lot of this up later. But a lot of this is about making adjustments until I, things start to fall into place. and have some cool whites coming in here in this highlight area. So this is where I want a little bit less yellow. Save some of that for some of that the flesh tones. I'm just getting indicate a little bit of where we have a little bit more color in the face. And I've just obliterated my nice yellow white <laughs> that I had mixed on my palette, but that's okay. Okay, yeah, that's closer to what I want. Just right like that. Um, haven't used it much yet, but I also have some safflower oil that I use for thinning out my paint. So besides the Gamsol, that just gives me um, a little bit um, more dry time. If I thin with that, it really doesn't feel much different when I'm painting. One's just more of a watery, even though it's not truly water, it's more of a solvent. And the other one is oily. And that oiliness doesn't feel a lot different, but it does really give me a lot more time to come in wet into wet. So I have to be aware that um, the shape of her forehead is very triangular. It narrows a lot at the top. And so I have to come in, keep some of that dark value from the hair coming in, and then the ear coming across. Still doesn't look like much. Let me get start to get the, um, the jawline in here. So if I look at it, it's something like that. She has a very square jaw. There. And I'm just going to lay in where that, that dark value is underneath her chin. Her neck. Let's get a little bit of a measurement there. Yeah, so I need her neck to come over just a little bit more. I'm looking at that negative shape in her neck. It's um, a little bit wider than when I have it initially. And this is where her hand is, com is coming around. I have a little bit of the garment that's coming in between her hands there. And then overall I have, uh, there's maybe a couple different values in her top or some of it may be a reflective light, but overall that's reading as pretty close to one value, maybe just a, a variation of that value. So I can just start coming in with a little bit of dark. Okay. Now, starting to see some of the things and where some things are off already. Pull 
her jawline back a little bit. There you go. And the ear. The lobe of the ear, we have a little bit of a warm red. And how to get the dark in there behind it. I'm just grabbing at colors, thing colors that are already on my palette, and I'm putting them sort of kind of like a searching for a color as I need it because there's all these little pools of color. Um, sometimes I'm mixing the color from scratch, and sometimes I'm just pulling from what's already on my palette. Part of um, color mixing when you're painting a la prima is that um, as a lot of times, let's say I'm putting um, pure white on my brush and I'm coming into an area that already has um, some paint and color down, well, it's not going to come out pure white. It's going to be mixing with the color that's already there. If I need it to get to a very clean white, then I have to either remove some of the paint that's already down or I have to come in with thicker and thicker paint to get to the value and color that I want. And so there's a little bit of approximation coming, going, happening with each brush stroke. Uh, okay, let's get a little bit. Um, cleaner mark for her nostril there. Some red on the underside and now I'm starting to need to get a little more precise. I don't know if I'm getting precise or not, but I need to. So it may just be slowing down a little bit to get some of these uh, colors and values in in the right place to go a little bit darker here. Okay. Okay, so, and the neck is much cooler compared to the rest of her face, probably a few steps darker. That difference is going to help uh, bring the face forward spatially. So it's just good be, to be aware to uh, make that comparison. Uh, Joy says, it's fascinating to watch your process, watching from Richmond, Virginia, and welcome from Richmond. Right now we have, it uh, looks like nine people watching, I think. Um, I always think that there's going to be more people tuning in um, based on the number of Instagram followers who vote on which, um, which photo I should paint. Literally a thousand people voted. Um, but yet we just have a few people watching, which is okay. So the teeth, the read is white, but um, you can't paint them as white. They're they're relatively lighter than some of the other parts of the of the um, color range. So they they read your brain makes them white. Um, so it, it's important to keep them the right value and color range for them to read. That's my cat Pasha. She's he still hasn't quite forgiven me for um, being away for uh, two and a half weeks. Um, still tries to bite me when I leave, go out the door for work now. It's been a, been a couple days. And uh, eventually he'll get back to normal. Okay, and I'm, some, um, some of the light areas of the hand are really reading very cool bluish. So I'm just sort of getting that color down. Not quite being exact yet, I just want to get more of the general form 
in to, to read the to get the volumes to read so if the back of the hand is darker bluer um, maybe a little bit grayer and darker in some spots I'm just gonna be very brave and put in some some strong values and getting sort of that wrist bone there it's very um, articulated for lack of a better word and looking at some of the negative shapes too in the hand so that um, helps me um, with the drawing a little bit and we see the thumb protruding up here that's coming up towards the eye means I have to come a little bit lower with this line here Let's to clean that up later <coughs> seeing on the chin it's as it's dropping into shadow we're getting a little bit more intensity with the red and then it's sort of shifting to blue as it gets lighter so not as much yellow here in the chin more of kind of a greenish and bluish cast a little bit of yellow there Okay, this is, um, you know, the, one of the challenges of this painting is the angle of her, of her face. It's tilted and we're looking a little bit up at it and that makes the drawing a little bit more difficult. Plus, I also want to think about the back of her head. If I don't get that proportion right, it's not going to feel right. There's, there's needs to be enough skull there and her hair is hiding um, where some of those lines are. So I do have to be careful to get that part right. So some of that's remeasuring and just re-comparing to the resource to get things in the right place. And I'm going to pull her forehead up, head up just a little bit higher. I seem to be losing a little bit of it. And then I'm going to come in more, get a little more of her hair in. That's going to help me judge values and the shape of her head. So again, getting a little bit of some reds mixed with the black. And I'm, I'm a believer in black. I use black in my palette. However, the black that I'm using tonight is a chromatic black. It is uh, pre-mixed. It's a Gamblin um, artist oil color, and it's made by using uh, crinacridone red mixed with thalo emerald. So there is no, it's an, actually not a true black. It's a mixture of complementary colors that are highly transparent. And um, so it's a way of having black in your palette without having uh, black in your palette, let's say. So, and I want to push back a little bit higher there. And her, we're really looking really up her nose um, so that it's very short, the distance here. It's very foreshortened. So that's going to, that is one of the challenges. So I have to give, push this part up a little bit more so we see a little bit more of the underside of her nose and then I'm going to make uh, this um, what do you call it this plane that's 
um, along the top ridge of the tip of her nose is moving back into space fairly quickly. And then we get we get a new paper towel here. I'm running out of clean paper towel. And um, <clears throat> and so and then we're seeing the highlight um, reflection of the light right here, um, right after that that shape. So it's a couple of quickly changing values and colors. Let's and let's narrow that reddish area. Let me just get a quick measurement too to see how far off I am. It's not too bad, but seeing that that shape of her nose is a little bit over if I'm gonna stay true to the edges of my panel I do need to move that over a little bit and come in with this ridge just a little bit higher there we go and so that highlight that I have I'm just gonna be put it down kind of thickly so that I can see it somewhere around there and then we have again this um, darker red where it starts to drop into shadow and then I really do have to go a lot darker here with the where the nostril is and where it truly falls into shadow there and I have a little bit st still we can see a bit of red right in the flange of the nose there. Just uh, need a little bit of white in that mixture to be able to see it. And then right in here I do have to smooth out the values so you do see the see that as all one um, feature. I just have to blend a little bit or come in with some transitional brush strokes. That wasn't transitional that was completely a different value so there we go. And then now I can start to see the nostril comes up much quicker here. And let's get a little more white in. This is where I need the yellow in the mixture right there because I'm going too cool. Let's try that again. Okay, and a little bit of uh, a little bit darker and redder around this edge here. Okay, starting to see it now. Just adjusting the shape of her eyelashes a little bit. I know this looks like a mess right now, but I just know from experience eventually that I'm, if I keep on hacking away at it, eventually I'm going to get there. Okay, starting to feel some of it. Some, a lot of this is getting the forms to feel like they're moving correctly in space. Right now I'm just sort of putting one color down next to another, but eventually I start to feel the forms moving um, at a certain speed towards me, away from me, and I'm starting to connect the, the parts so that they feel like they're, they're doing what they're supposed to do. They feel like the anatomy that they're, it's representing. And then once I get to that point, it's just sort of like um, you get sort of in this Zen mode where you feel like you're painting right on the person's face. Um, but it takes a while to get there. Uh, it takes a lot of getting the right values and colors in the right place before some of that starts to happen. And to be very sensitive about some of the relative um, values and changes of value. And I do a lot of, um, even though it's not very efficient, I move things around. I move eyes over, even if they're already all painted, if they're not in the right place, then I just slowly adjust them until they are. And um, th 
that's just my way of painting unfortunately it's uh, sometimes it comes out pretty nicely and I like that process um, but other times it does feel kind of a little bit labored and um, inefficient like you've painted something and then you've painted again three or four more times so let me look at my feet a little bit um, Annette Louise wow it's all about putting something down bravely then you can see to make corrections yep that's kind of how I paint um, Annette also says oh hi I'm from Australia um, okay well if Annette you're still here listening uh, Australia is a big country and continent let me know where in Australia you are um, and what time of day it is. I, I assume it's starting to be midday or afternoon. Um, Gail Lynn says, watching you um, freeze me in my style. What did you call it? In any case, it works for me. Uh, well, I called it ADHD, but um, it's a la prima, which is painting wet into wet and um, with very minimal drawing. Um, some people do paint a la prima with a lot of pre-drawing, but I do it without just without any drawing at all and and I kind of like painting that way um, and Gail says watching from Washington State welcome Deb Bray says I'm watching from Nebraska glad to see you back live on Tuesday night yes I was out of the country for uh, two and a half weeks and I was traveling the night before my last Tuesday so I decided uh, not to paint and help with packing and stuff around the house so it has been almost a month since I've I've done this without um, without missing a, a Tuesday night probably for um, a little bit over a year. There was a couple weekends I was out of town or a couple weeks and I had a um, put up some videos anyway for those who wanted to see uh, my process. I had some pre-recorded um, paintings that I had done. Anyway, um, Annette uh, okay, so Dave B says, um, what's the best way to learn colors? I'll answer that in a second. And Annette Louise says, it is 11 a.m. in South Australia. So I don't know if South Australia is that the state. I mean, my geography is so bad. Um, or is that like Tasmania or something? Um, and so Dave B, what is the best way to learn colors? So there's lots of different approaches. Uh, one way to learn color is to start with a limited palette that way you're um, you're limited in your color choices and that takes um, takes a lot of um, a lot of relief it's sort of like um, learning piano with fewer keys or something like that and it just makes it a little bit easier and then you gradually start to add in more and more colors another way is some people paint uh, the whole painting in uh, black and white and then add colors once that dries they paint over it with colors and I, I kind of find that way of painting a little bit unsatisfying for me um, trying to get sort of start to get the feeling of that eyebrow coming um, forward right here sorry I'm bumping into my camera um, so this edge is a little bit sharp and it's coming down and we have the soften this a little bit start to feel that form and again I'm going to adjust the shape of her lashes a little bit to get that curve in there so nice thing about painting all prima is it's just like that Photoshop tool the smudge tool you can just use the brush and kind of move things around a little bit um, it's very forgiving but it also can be very messy if um, you're trying to change uh, value and color to a great degree and need to go a little bit browner in that spot so a lot of orange a little bit of white some gray eventually I will paint some freckles in but right now I'm looking at sort of the general color shapes I want to get that working first I've done some paintings where I was painting freckle to freckle and that was just a disaster um, because um, I wasn't getting the underlying form and all that again I want a little bit of red along the top of her nose
Okay, and so in a little bit of the expression, there's a little bit of tension in her brow. It's they're being pushed together slightly, so I do want that kind of crease that that you kind of get that feeling, and I'm gonna just come in a little bit higher here. And I'm not really sure we see the other eyelash, but if we did, it would just be right in here. Let's put, just get a little bit of the shape of her lashes coming forward. Okay. All this is just about adjusting, adjusting. Sometimes I just get tired of adjusting and I just leave it be. And sometimes I work on a painting and everything just falls in the right place right away. And I'm very grateful for that, but it's somewhat rare. So I tend not to depend on it. Um, just allow the painting to need adjustment. And again, I'm going to carve into the mouth a little bit more because it's not quite right yet. And a little bit lighter light along the top edge of the lip there. I can see I need a little bit of greens and yellows up here. Nope. A little bit lighter. Haven't really touched the green yet, so let's get a little bit right in here. And it may be just a, a need more of a blue than a green. So when I say blue or green, I'm really looking at just subtle changes from one area of the flesh to another where it leans one way or another. It's not like I'm putting down a pure color. I'm just getting the influence of one color or another. And so that's when someone says, well, how do you get the flesh tones? Well, it's really about looking at those um, color influences and how they change and really getting the right value structure so that um, the forms are moving in a believable way and then that way the flesh tones do sort of fall into place. I do see people who pre-mix all their flesh tones and I, I can't work that way and I usually can see that they've done that because they're, you see less variety in their, in their flesh tones. So, and the Alla Prima really does help with this because if you have one color and you mix it into another, then you kind of get something a little bit closer to what's happening in the little areas of change of colors and values in the face where it leans one way and then it moves into another very quickly. And if you pre-mix all your colors, then you don't get that all that variety in there that makes something feel a little bit more alive. Okay. So I know I want pretty much, this is like the lightest light in here is underneath the eyebrow. We got that really strong reflection of the light. And then it comes down on the cheek. And this is one reason why I made the, the photo a little bit darker with a little more contrast. So I do get these kind of um, really beautiful reflections that are in the face. Uh, where do I want to go? So I'm seeing kind of a little bit of pink in here in that in that reflection. So that means I have to come, I have to work a little bit darker around it so that that does pop a little bit and that I don't have to go, uh, don't have to put in pure white for that to look like it's shining can have a little bit of room to have a little bit of color in there. Okay, starting not to look like such a mess as originally, um, how it looked originally. Let's get a little bit of um, orange in here in the cheek. We get a little bit of blue and that as it moves into shadow there. And I'm 
missing a just a little bit of purple that we see right along the her eyelashes there and that's going to help push that form back that's where her lower eyelid is and her cheek meet there and so that's pushing back into space a little bit and I still don't have kind of lost at this that highlight there that sort of pops there in the corner of her eye and also on her upper eyelid just want a real subtle change of color and value here so that I see where we have her upper eyelid um, tra um, transitioning into her eyebrow. When I say eyebrow, I mean more the form than the actual the eyebrow hair. So there's that form. It's a kind of a roundish form that sits um, just below the forehead. Okay, and I'm going to think of, start to think about my background color. I know it's maybe a little bit premature, but my ADHD is strong. And um, so I'm thinking about sort of that yellowish green, gray kind of color. I think that works pretty well from the photo, so I'm going to head in that direction. Um, but I just want to start to cover over some of this white value so I can start to see um, I can start to um, judge better the values that are in the face and in the hands, etc. A little more yellow in there. This get crazy. I'm using up a lot of area on my palette, so I may need to scrape it at some point um, to have a little more room to mix. But right now, I just need enough paint to get some of this. I just been using one brush so far. This is a fairly large round with a nice tip on it. I haven't um, I haven't quite destroyed it yet so it, the tip can work still for some highlights. It's, uh, I just see quickly so my ADHD is jumping in and seeing this eyebrow is just a little bit higher. And then I see the forehead coming a little bit rounder here giving it a different, a little bit different direction than when I had it. And some, I want to be clear that the form changes here so we see more of a top area of her head. So, so it allows for the foreshadowing, foreshadowing, foreshortening rather. Uh, I'm a painter, not a writer. So yes, not foreshadowing, foreshortening. Let's just throw a light in there again. We kind of lost it, so we start to see where that's reflecting. And that highlight comes down along the edge of her nostril. And then a little bit softer on that edge. And a little bit of highlight here. And coming up there. And I can see I'm totally too dark on the side of her eye here and her, her temple. So I'm just going to throw a bunch of white in there kind of move it in the right direction. Just putting in some of the marks that indicate that there's um, hairline there. It's a transition, pretty strong transition from uh, from light to dark. And then we're in between sort of the mass of her hair and her forehead. So. And then I want to start to think about the highlights in her hair too, which is not white white. Um, it's going to be about a half um, value, at least the way I have um, 
the value structured right now. And so I can um, start to play around with that. But right now I'm just sort of getting the general dark mass going. Okay, let's get some of that finger shapes in. Okay, let me catch up to okay no new comments great just gonna keep on going here yeah we're about 50 minutes in um, making some good progress I don't always finish these during the the demo sometimes I just need a little bit of alone time to sit back and look and make more uh, finer adjustments Let's pull her finger out a little bit further and put this a little bit higher too. There we go. her garment that's underneath the hand here so towards her wrist her sleeve comes down a little faster than what I have it side of the hand where the knuckles are. Just going to indicate that quickly. Another point of tension is underneath her lower lip where it's being pushed up or pushed in by her, the heel of her hand. Let's come in a little bit more on that. Okay, then I really want to push pretty hard on this shadow here because I really want to feel that it's um, that it's dropping back into space. I'm just moving that the fingers back a little bit. I'm just gonna throw in a just touch of red, guessing about where her thumb is. This other finger has to move out further. And that this finger is longer too than when I had it. 
got some of that cool color that's underneath here. It's fairly cool here on the light side of the arm. Okay, this often happens if I'm drawing from one direction, I see the a landmark in one spot. And if I'm drawing from a different direction, it shows up somewhere else. So there's some miscalculation at least on from one way or the other, or maybe it's halfway between both, but then sometimes I have to stop and really compare the photo to what I put down to see where it's, where it's off. Sometimes it's something can be in the right place, but it'll look wrong because the the value structure isn't right yet, and something's not turning in space um, as fast or as slow as it should. I often have this problem with with the cheeks or jaws; they don't look like they're in the right place, uh, and a lot of times they are. It's just that the um, the face looks wider or narrower because it um, is not. Um, the dimensions of it aren't reading correctly. I don't know. I didn't say that very eloquent, eloquently, but hopefully you get the idea. Okay, and I want that upper lip to come in even tighter to her nose. It's really being smashed in there, for lack of a better term, and then there, her shadow is just sort of coming the other way to really get a lot of tension in there. So a lot of um, changes in value and color in a very small space. Okay, now my palette's just one big mess. So may have to clean up a little bit. So I have uh, just a window scraper. You can get any of these at Home Depot or at Lowe's very easily or your local hardware store if you want to um, support your local community. That's fine. <clears throat> and But it does the trick. I have a glass palette. I use uh, I have a palette box called Ezel um, is the company name and I forget which um, which size I have, but um, but it's the kind that do doesn't have the panel um, storage in it. It just has the it has a narrow box and a place that um, holds your panels or canvas, and I use it as my studio paddle studio easel, even though it's really designed for um, for plain air or outdoor painting. Getting a little bit more blue in her shirt there. This dark area comes up a little bit higher, sort of melts with her hair a little bit in here. So you can make a little bit of differentiation in color even though the values are very close. So um, the shirt is uh, bluish and the hair is a little bit of reddish in there. And I need to make the background a little bit lighter so you can start to see where her um, her hair stops. That's really too intense, so I need to get a little more gray in there. And yellow, my favorite. Okay, there. That's still too intense, but that's okay. Sometimes you need a little bit of that... Um, that extra push of color to give the painting a little bit of excitement. It's a little bit different than photography. Photography you can have really nice beautiful muted tones and and it, 
just holds up pretty well. Sometimes in painting, if you don't have those little accents of color, um, the painting can just really die on you and look very drab and muddy. Um, you have to forgive me for all those um, classical painters out there that, that paint in very uh, muted colors. It's just um, not my taste, but, um, but I can also appreciate it at the same time. Okay, I want the tip of the nose actually just a little bit higher still, too. I've got to get a little bit lighter color and get that up higher, which means a little bit more of that brownish red that's up here. Here. Of course, I have to put that highlight in for like the fifth time, which is now about here. And I can just go a dab of pure white paint right in that spot. Get the nostril coming in a little bit over further. And get, move that other nostril away a little bit. That's starting to feel a little bit better to me. Oh, did you see that? Sometimes those end up working out pretty well, but not right now. It's a little bit too, too dark and too colorful for that one spot. But I just needed a little bit more blues and greens coming in right there help with the change of form. Again, we need a touch of green coming in right here. Just softening up some of these transitions so that we start to see the pieces coming together a little bit better. Don't want to do too much blending because it starts to look terrible, but I do want some of those a la prima effects where you just feel the one stroke of paint blending into the other. See, I can move that jawline over just a little. Just about pure black here underneath her sleeve. Don't see a whole lot of light. Um, my palette panel holder there is getting in my way a little bit, but I can fix that later. Okay, 
I'm going to be using a lot of white here, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to put a little bit more white on my palette to get enough to do the job. So we see a little bit more red towards the tips of the fingers and on the knuckles. Um, there's typically a little bit more blood towards the surface, and so that's why we're getting, we get that a little bit towards the palm of the hand too. So along this edge, and we're getting a lot of red along the top edge of her thumb. Okay, now this paintbrush is a little bit, getting a little bushy, so having a little hard time controlling it, but I think I got it there. And then we have a darker edge right along there where the nail is. So I'm just being a little bit more patient with my strokes here as I kind of hone in on some of this. doesn't mean I'm right. It just means I think I'm right. So I'm being a little bit more committal in what I'm putting down. Eventually that's what you need to get there. You can't just um, be wishy-washy all the way through the painting. You do have to make some committal marks to get something towards a finish. I'm looking too to try to get some nice calligraphic marks too so that you see the that the fresh brush um, what are they called? Paint strokes. You see the sort of fresh paint strokes in the in the finished painting. And I want a little bit of color, maybe it's greenish towards this back edge. Color meaning darker in value, so you start to see the color along that edge. And that you see it as it moving away from you in space. Okay, but that's needed to move it in a little bit. Just a little bit off in the drawing. Okay. Okay, there's a lot of yellow here in this. And I can always go grayer. I can always pull back a little bit. So let's go a little bit grayer here, lighter. And of course her arm is just reading as flat right now. There's no value change and it really does. It's much darker on this side of the arm. It's got a lot of green and blue in it. Um, shadows there. And some reddish shadows here.
so I got the top of the finger here and then we very quickly shift to seeing the side of it going down at an angle and we got the very fairly dark value from the inside of the mouth along that edge and then some of the values down inside Okay, so what I'm missing is some of the separation of the fingers here. This is where I need a lot of white again, so pretty soon I need to put out more white on the palette to get the reflection off these knuckles. Blues and greens in here in the side of the hand. And then we need to watch the anatomy a little bit here where it wrist comes in. some warm light here on the hand. Don't know where the, that warmth comes from, but there's probably light bouncing all around from our face and from other objects that might be in the room that we don't see. Okay, and we're running low on white. bit of warm shadow here that goes into cool. Just throwing lots of color in here. It's okay. It's not going to hurt us. the garment coming in here to save us from making the wrist too big. Okay, where was I? Um, okay, let me look at my feed. Looks like I missed some. Okay, Gail Lynn says, watching you um, frees me in my style. What did you call? Oh, I already read that, didn't I? Um, okay, so Gail Lynn says, I absolutely appreciate how much you allow for adjustments. I also appreciate your ADHD, can relate. It all works together beautifully. Well, thank you. I'm happy to share my learning disabilities. Um, I was in some ways a terrible student in school until I got to art school anyway. I have a, a, um, a bachelor's of mechanical engineering that I got from UC Santa Barbara. Um, it was one of the most difficult things I ever did because it um, the way the school was set up was the exact opposite of how I best learn things, but I managed to get through it. And then a couple years of trying to figure out my way in the world. I was a little bit lost. Didn't really love engineering, um, the practical part of engineering. I liked the problem solving part of it. OK, there's some more white on my palette um, to work with. Um, hi, Pasha. I'm sorry I abandoned you for two and a half weeks. Are you forgiving me yet? Yeah, no, not quite. Still give me the cougar roar. Okay, um, so anyway, when I got to art school, then I started to get closer to w the way I best learn stuff, although that was a bit of a struggle because I studied illustration, and part of the illustration degree is you learn watercolors and airbrush and painting with acrylics, and um, none of it really um, worked very well for me. It was all a struggle until I got to painting with oils and that was like 
Hello! Angels came out and sang, and um, I started doing some pretty nice um, paintings for considering that I was still in art school. And, uh, but at the time, and still is this case, is that is that realism in painting doesn't get quite the appreciation it deserves in the in the general art world. Um, it still has to compete with for gallery space and for money um, conceptual fine art, which um, some collectors will pay millions and millions of dollars for. And then there's uh, realism, which collectors will pay thousands and thousands of dollars or maybe even just hundreds or tens of dollars for depending on who it is and what it is and so um, but this is how I like to paint so and the way I like to think about artwork I can appreciate conceptual artwork but it's overall it's not um, how I want to work even though I am a conceptual th thinker most of the time it's got a little bit of that green that's coming in to the corner or the side of her nose here. Try to get some of those little shapes in there that are really um, part of her anatomy. So I'm not losing anything. Yes, I know. You throw a little highlight in there. Get this a little bit lighter here. That's too light. So this is where I start to do a lot of squinting um, because I squint, I look at the photo and then I look, or if I'm painting from a live model, look at the model and then squint down at my painting and see where um, things aren't really setting up quite right. And you can, s the squinting is similar to uh, looking at something from a distance. It starts to bring all of the, those, um, details, you start to lose the details and you can see sort of the larger forms and shapes. Let's get a, some of that nice blue, turquoisey blue color that's coming into her teeth. And the dark edge of it that's curving. Okay, something like that. It's going to need a little bit more work, but it's kind of moving in the right direction here. Let's get a little bit more lighter. And purpley color coming down there. That's not quite right yet, but it's getting closer. Almost got some spots of pure white right here, then going into kind of a that turquoise color. Where's that turquoise when I need it? There we go. And then a dark edge of the lip. And then we got a little bit of highlight which is kind of in the purple range right here let's um, make that a little smaller got a little bit too fancy with it I'm going to give her just a little bit more chin. And if you look at the chin closely, you can see it goes, starts to slide into shadow towards the bottom, but then there's a little bit of reflected light underneath that, which helps, um, helps you see that form curving 
and it's catching the light from the underside. So, and that color of light is sort of reddish. So it's right. Let's go a little bit lighter. And let's use that same color to soften it a little bit. That's a little bit better. And let's give her a little bit more chin this way too. Sorry, I keep on getting caught in the cord of my camera. And so giving you guys a little bit of vertigo. get a little bit of pure white just right here in the cheek to start to see this shine coming through here and then put some darker marks right near that so we can start to appreciate it a little bit more kind of a mess of hair here that's in front of the ear. And the interior of her ear, which I noticed before I started manipulating the values that really was a lot redder. Um, sort of changing the value structure and curves in Photoshop really made kind of some um, strange value structure inside the ear so I'm just I can push that part just a little bit darker what I was trying to do was try I was trying to make the hair and some of the features darker without pushing the background so dark so I started to lighten that part up and that's where we got some of those strange um, color or value structure and things like the that dark area inside the ear okay and try to keep those darker cool values in her neck that's going very sort of exaggerating that blue a little bit but that's okay I'm gonna make sure I keep a little bit of yellow in there too Okay, let's, I think we're going to need to get a little bit greater sense of volume in the hair here because um, kind of looking like she's losing a little bit of her, um, her, the shape of her head. Just kind of indicating where there would be a little bit of a, some highlights in her hair exaggerated that a little bit and I'm going to need to push it back but I'm just trying to get an idea for now of where things are.
just have to be very careful with that shadow shape there because um, if I want her nose to curve up correctly in that very sh um, small short foreshortened space I need to um, have that shadow shape right fairly exact So coming a little bit higher up with the tip of the nose, which is lighter. correct that shape around the thumb which I didn't do very well but a little more of that background color so that I can change the the line of that sleeve there. And I think I've gotten away a little bit on my measurement here. So something's there's gonna be some part of this that's pretty far off. If I look that the that no, oh, maybe it's not as far off as I think. see where we are. So, um, okay, no new comments. That's okay. I'm just going to keep on going here. Okay, and just working on some of these transitions here so that they look like they're part of her as I, you know, see the jawbone and things like that, that things are turning at the right speed. I've totally avoided my orange and there's some orange colors in there. So let's see if I can get a little, some of those in. nice pinks right in here. Generally have to go a little bit lighter. She does have a little bit of hair. Some, oh, what do they call it, like peach fuzz that's along the edge there. And so I can get, indicate a little bit of that, um, but I don't want to get too crazy with it. And I really need to make 
this shadow a lot sharper and darker here. I really want to get the feeling of um, her jaw dropping back in space really quickly and then softer as it comes into the neck. So sharp, fairly sharp on one side and a little softer on the other. And then the fingers coming out a little bit faster there. Probably would have been a lot more efficient to to get some of those um, landmarks in the hand in the right place to begin with, but that's okay. Just it's just the way I paint man can't help it. Luckily, I paint in a way that's pretty forgiving. If once you kind of learn how to manipulate it. And then I have the side of the finger here, which is going a bit darker. And purpley. So I've got my dioxazine purple in there with a little bit of black and white. And need the kind of a wider shape there, which is the knuckle. Then I have the back of the knuckle here coming in, meeting along here, and then coming up and then down. So let's make that a bit darker. It's slowly getting there. You start to, some of that anatomy is starting to look a little bit better, if not, if not perfect, at least in the right direction. Sometimes the, you know, not everything has to be so well defined. You can leave some areas a little bit looser and let kind of the eye fill it in. Also that's really good if you want the focal point to be in a certain place, then don't start painting all the details somewhere else because that's going to kind of um, conflict or compete with that idea that you're trying to get someone to look in one place, but then you're painting all this detail somewhere else. And so where are they going to look? They're going to look where all that detail is. So I think you can have a really strong effect of painting if you just decide to have one focal point and then you let a lot of other things just be a lot looser and less well-defined and a lot of soft edges and um, and that really does like tell the viewer where you want them to look and that's one of the things I have a hard time remembering when I'm painting it's like I'm trying to paint everything that I see in a photo for example and then I forget that um, that I want to direct people a little bit into into looking at one thing or another. There's usually some aspect of the photo that I really like, and that's what it, where I want people to look. as I contradict that by painting details in where I don't need to, but still want the anatomy to be right. There's a side and a top, even though the values are very close, I still want you to see it as having 
uh, dimension and direction. Here, let's get that shadow here. Not a lot of color in it. It's just more dark gray. knock down this highlight a little bit and it's a bit distracting Okay, I want kind of a warm black right in here, this crease. Another one there. So now I'm getting a little bit more specific about some of the values in here. Where something drops a little more into shadow, where there's a little bit of reflected light. And eventually that will start to pull together as forms in space. So there's a couple of ways you can you can paint form. You can slowly change the values around the, a curve and be very um, very careful with um, transitions. Um, there's some painters that do that very well. Um, and then the other way is to paint uh, the shadows, uh, the form structurally. And, to, and so if you think about having a half tone and a coarse shadow and reflected light and highlights, and if you put in all those elements in the right place, then the form also um, will read just as well. It just won't look quite as, as sculptural or as as smooth as the other way of doing it, but you still kind of get to the same place eventually. It just has kind of a, a overall different feeling to it. One way you might feel a little more painterly and the other will feel a little bit more um, like, I guess, photographic or it will just have a more uh, solid sense where you don't see the brushwork. I personally love to see brushwork. That when I see that in a painting, that just makes me very happy. Okay, and I want to I can play with this edge here. I can make it very soft. Move some of the background into the that hairline a little bit and really play around with that edge so it really feels like it is kind of moving away from us and I do also want a little bit of drama of the hair moving around if I can get some of that hair is a good place where you can really show off your your brushwork because it's a little bit like clouds in that respect there you uh, you know what a nose is supposed to look like but you don't always know where hair is curling and wrapping around and so you can play around with it and still um, be fairly convincing. So this is where I'm doing a little bit of um, a little bit of blending not too much again 
if you do too much blending, then you lose some of that freshness of the brushwork. So I can see on my monitor what you guys are seeing is a little bit lighter than the actual painting. And if I make a little bit of adjustment, let's see if I can adjust the values a little bit without breaking my layout here. Um, let me see if I can get there. Um, we have yellow, I guess that's the person's name and not part of the sentence. Uh, yellow says, this face reminds me a lot of the faces of Malcolm Lipke. I like uh, Malcolm Lipke's work a lot. I don't think my work is quite as stylized as his is, but um, but I think we both appreciate the wet into wet brushstroke effects. So let's, um, let's see if I can adjust. Hopefully I can adjust this without um, breaking the whole thing. So I'm going to lower the brightness a little bit. Um, I can pump up the color intensity. Let me see contrast. A little bit less contrast and um, white balance. I don't think I need to play with that too much. Oh, no, I do want white balance. Um, Okay, well, I don't know what you actually see in your monitor, but it looks a little bit closer in mine now that I've lowered the, the brightness a little bit. Okay, I think that's a bit closer. That's good. Um, you are getting a bit of the reflection of the light here, so you're not seeing the, the background color very well. And I might be able to point my light a little bit differently. That might help with that. Uh, yeah, but I'm not seeing, I'm not getting enough light um, to work with. Okay, well that's a little bit better. Um, maybe it looks a little bit cooler than it actually is, but you can at least see some of the value structure a little bit better. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, Sabrina says, enjoy watching from Oklahoma. Um, welcome, Sabrina. Welcome to this painting demo. And we're about an hour and 45 minutes in. I've been just doing a lot of talking and not enough painting. So if I focus a little bit, I might be able to get a little bit um, further quicker. Let's get a little bit of the green that's coming in underneath the eye and make the lashes curl up a little bit more that way okay and then I need to work on some of my transitions here so that you really do feel like the form turning sort of that reddish brownish color the freckly kind of colors that you get in the cheeks
move this highlight over a little bit. I have it too close to, oops, sorry, I keep on bumping into that cord. I think my next time I set this up, I'm going to tape the cord away so that it doesn't get in my way quite as much. I need to go lighter there, and so and I don't have enough white in my mixture. There we go. It's a little bit better. Lost one of my nostrils here. It's in right there. Otherwise, the nose looks a little bit too wide. I don't indicate where that far edge is. Oops, not what I wanted to do, but that's okay. Again, paint's very forgiving. So I do need to move that line of the finger, oops, too blue, line of that finger over a little bit. It's right up against the side of the nose. Okay, so, so far I've done this whole thing with this one big round brush that had, at one point it had a fairly nice tip on it. Now I'm not so sure. I've been cleaning it, rubbing it, and so now it's a little bit bushy. So you know, I can kind of flatten the tip a little bit so I can still get a little bit of control. I'm going to extend the tip of this other finger a little bit too. Mostly the nail. Oops. Gave her a very long nail. Get a lot of red in there. A little bit lighter so we can see the color. Okay, so I'm going to keep on hacking away at these hands. I'll probably finish the hands offline just because they require so much adjustment to get them right.
So I will get back pretty quickly to the face here, the part that I kind of have under control. Let's see, narrow the that shadow part in the mouth. Need to give it another hit of highlight on the lips. that turquoise when I need it. Move these teeth up just a little bit. And then just get that punchy little reflection that's there. And I'm getting need to get that little bit of a, a red that comes right in against the nostril there. So that it does start to feel like you're going into the interior. I mean not go you're not going inside the nostril, that you're seeing inside the interior. What do you think I'm saying? Okay, um, let me see, Sabrina Sims, hi Sabrina, welcome, enjoying watching you from Oklahoma. So I got a little a bit of uh, Midwest contingent here uh, tonight, I think I saw Nebraska, yep, Nebraska and Oklahoma, and then we got Australia. So, so, so a little bit of national, a little bit international. I'm painting here in Baltimore, Maryland. I guess I don't always remember to say that. I ask everyone else where they're painting, where they're watching from, and then I forget to tell them where I am. Okay, and I can go very thick with these highlights. It really does help them get that kind of punchiness that you want that really makes it come forward and stands out and really starts to feel like light hitting the surface. Getting kind of a weird color mixture here for that, um, for the area of the hair that's sort of like thinned out along her forehead. And then I need to go much darker right where the hair really goes, gets in full. Just get a lot more light here to get, oops. Okay, this is where I gotta run and get some terpenoids, so don't go away. I'm just taking a 30 second break here. Sorry about that. I'm back. I just had my art supplies all over the house. Um, okay, so what was I working on right here? Oh, I was trying to get a little bit of the lights here in the jaw, and that's where I was running out of um, 
of my solvent. Okay. And some of the light here, just not light enough. And I'm losing some of my yellows and oranges. Okay, so Yellow says, how do you go about finding these amazing portrait photos of people? I find that to be one of my biggest obstacles in painting due to an illness that makes it hard to go anywhere. Um, so Yellow, um, so I really started painting in earnest portraits about um, three years ago and I got a lot of the references from the app Sketchy, which people post their selfies and such to, um, to the app, and then artists come and then they can find resource images on there from people posting. Um, they see something they, they like, then they can do a painting or a drawing of it and then post it back to the app. And so then people can, both artists and, um, and people putting the reference photos, sometimes you call them muses, um, can then both then appreciate both the photos and the, the paintings that were made from them. And so I, um, for about a year and a half, I was getting most of my photos that way. Um, and then I found that kind of slow going to find the photos that I wanted. And so then I started looking more on Pinterest for photos that, um, and started making a board, a board of photos that I thought was interesting and wanted to paint. A lot of them are models or shot by professional photographers, but that in a way gives you a little bit higher quality photos to work from. And most of the time, if I can, I will contact the model or the photographer or the subject in some cases where it's not a model and ask permission or let them know that I'm doing uh, a painting demo from their photos. And, um, and that, uh, a lot of the artwork part of it is in the photography and that's um, fine. I, I, um some degree relying on the photo and some degree kind of making some things up where it makes it more about the paint and the painting and um, I think it's kind of a combination it's sort of a um, collaborative effort in that respect so I give credit where credit's due and um, make sure that I put the model and the, and the photographer's name in uh, to let people know where that resource information came from. Anyway, so, um, so from Sketchy or from Pinterest or from sometimes just straight from Instagram, I'm on Instagram a lot if I see something that I like. And I follow, um, follow the accounts of uh, certain people that I've um, especially from Sketchy that I've liked painting in the past so they put up a new photo that I really like then sometimes that becomes the inspiration for a painting. Still not getting that lower lip quite right yet. It's not feeling quite full enough. Let me just take another stab at it. I can exaggerate that highlight too, which might help. And something I noticed in the photo, and now that I look a little bit closer at it, is that her lip is sort of bending around here. And which may help create sort of that illusion of tension. 
and then this shadow is a little bit tighter against her finger. Let's get a little bit purple here for that side of her finger. I think I'm pulling really hard on this brush when I'm cleaning it, so I can start to feel the the brush hairs coming out a little bit, so I need to just be a little more gentle with it. Let's pull the knuckles out a little bit, those stronger whites. And I got all kinds of messiness in the values here in the back side of the hand. So I'm going to try to clean that up a little bit. I don't need quite so much um, texture and value change going on. see I also need to pull in the jaw a little bit. ear needs to come up just a little bit higher if I look at it.
Okay, let me see if I missed anything here. Um, Yella says, um, thanks for the explanation. I started by painting other people's photos and then moved away from that a few years ago because I started to enjoy painting from my own photos. Um, so self-portraiture, I guess. And um, I have to backtrack a little bit. I'll finish Yellow's comments. Um, Yellow says, I definitely will check out some of the photographers and models on these apps and sites. Um, more often, though, the sketchy app sounds um, great at the moment. Yeah, yeah, so check it out. It does only work on the iPhone, so um, in that respect, it um, it's a little bit limiting if you um, if you have a Android device, then it's a little. Um, you may have to borrow someone's phone if you really want to check out the photos on there. And um, and then I missed the comment from uh, Malvin Malvinites Mal Malvinites. Why do you make art? Oh, well, that one's easy because I enjoy it. <laughs> um, it's definitely not for money, um, although I do do commissions and like it when I am able to make um, a little bit extra money doing that, but I have a full-time job, and so I don't have to worry about making money from my artwork. I do enjoy both um, um, painting as a personal pursuit, and I also like... Um, what I'm doing here, which is explaining to other artists um, what it is I'm doing if they're trying to learn. I can only teach people um, what it is that I'm doing. If they have a different style or focus, they have to figure that, um, that part out for themselves. Um, but at the end of the day, the only real, real way to learn is just by sheer repetition of doing hundreds and hundreds of um, that thing that you want to learn how to do better. And, um, but why do I paint is because I like um, both the process of learning and improving and, um, and I enjoy the act of doing it too. So both aspects of that. Okay, I want a little bit of red, dark red around the outline of this finger. I think I need to go a little bit darker here. Yep. Let's see if I can soften that transition a little bit. And see if I can get the shadow right here in that space in the finger so you feel like you're getting in between those two fingers. So there's lots of little forms here in the hands. Unfortunately, tonight I'm not going to be able to do that justice. And again, I can decide whether I really want to dig in and get all of those or I just really want to get the overall feeling of the hands and not worry about so much of the detail. As long as a lot of the marks that you make are true to the actual anatomy that's there, then then it will uh, read correctly, even if you're generalizing quite a bit. Trying to get a kind of grayish blue here, maybe a little bit of purple in it. That's sort of in the back of the hand, maybe a little bit redder, seeing there. And then softer transition. And then it goes a little bit darker where the hand starts to wrap around a little bit. And we have harder edge coming down here. try to clean up some of these values. And I do want a little bit of a harder edge here to get sort of the, the, the bones that are um, that are in her wrist. Without um, without really going overboard on that because it's not where I want the eye to focus. 
focus. So I'm going to soften that up a little and bring in a little more light in from this bottom edge. Yeah, that's feeling a little bit better. And you can feel this is too wide here and too narrow there, so have to work on that thickness a little bit. It's a little bit better. Okay. Okay, so we're about a little bit over two hours in. Um, and let me see, I have a new comment here, Gail, let me see. Um, Yellow says, I really like the emotion you capture, keep it up. Thank you, Yellow. And Gail Lynn says, I may have missed if you said it, but where did you attend art school? Well, I didn't say, but I went to Art Center College of Design in Pasadena. Besides my um, bachelor's in mechanical engineering, I went back to school and got a second bachelor's in um, fine art illustration from Art Center College Design in the late 80s. Um, spent a fair amount of time in New York doing graphic design work and, um, and now work in front-end web development, a little bit of design, but mostly um, development work and I paint as a hobby and sometimes do um, sometimes do commissions um, have a little Etsy shop where people can find me and hire me to do portraiture and some parts of the year I get very busy with that stuff right now in the middle of the summer it's a little bit slow but I have had some work come in um, and I hope to make painting my retirement career. Um, but I will paint regardless of whether someone's paying me or not. And sometimes I enjoy it more when no one's paying me because then I just paint what I want at, the, at my own leisure and I'm my own art director. So the jawline is not quite having the turn that I wanted to have yet. I need to get that little bit of accent mark in there. Okay, that was a little bit too dark, but needed that to go in that direction. Oops. Having a hard time finding the line here of the forehead, getting that just right. So I've been moving back and forth a little bit. I think that's a bit closer.
Okay. So I'm going to need to make that finger here a little bit wider. I feel like I need to drop the angle of this one a little bit more. Looking at the negative space. Got the thumb coming in right here very lightly. A bit darker. Just maybe I need to go more blue there for that this little shadow area. Yep, that looks about right. And a little bit harder edge between the finger and the thumb. Okay, so this is lots of little shapes that it's going to take a long time to do. And I got the face pretty close to where I want it, so when I just finish off the face and then I can finish off the hands offline. Um, so, let's see. Just re measure, redraw some of this. Sometimes you want to paint along the direction of the form because you want your values to kind of lay down in a little bit like stripes along the form. At least that's how a lot of Ala Prima painters paint and as a way of helping create a more convincing value structure to get uh, the forms to read in space. Um, and in fact, uh, John Singer Sargent would do that by, um, with really thick paint and, um, and filbert brushes, uh, filbert bristle brushes, so that he created kind of like grooves in the paint, almost like, I always think of them as almost like a record, a uh, phonograph record that, um, that you see the grooves along the falling along the shape of the form. Okay, I want a little bit more light here to kind of, and maybe a little bit darker along the lower edge of the, the cheek shape so that I, I feel a little bit more of the hollow of the cheek. It's a little bit of uh, makeup there that's um, Maybe it's not makeup, maybe it's just her coloration, but um, it's making it a little bit harder to see where the, the hollow of the cheek is. Let's can move that corner of her jaw up just a little bit higher. We have more of a shadow here, and then it gets softer, and then gets harder again. I think I'm going to paint for about 10 more minutes here, and then I'm going to take it offline and do my, um, add my secret sauce, the part that I won't show you guys so that you'll never paint as, as well as I do. It's my little trade secrets. I always tell this story about um, Joaquin Soroya, who's a um, historic someone who painted um, beautiful landscapes and figurative painting in the, about the turn of the century. And he had his art students that would follow him around when he did these paintings on the beach. And he would get the painting to a certain point and it would be kind of a mess. And then he would send his students away. And when they came back, he had this beautiful finished painting. and. They th um, always assume he was hiding some secret from them, and I think he just needed <laughs> to concentrate a little bit to bring kind of all the messes together until it sort of gelled. And um, having that experience of painting in public before and just really needing to 
have a little bit of um, your own time and pace to be able to get the painting to a finish. Let's get a little bit of red in the shadow right here along the edge of the forehead. I think that's going to give it a little bit of freshness, interest, I don't know. I want to bring this eyebrow up just slightly. This brings a little bit of um, a little bit of that expression where she just brings a little bit of uh, doubt in the expression. Instead of the eyebrows pushing down, they kind of pull up a little bit at the corners. At least that's sort of what I feel from from seeing them like that. Try a different color there. A little bit pinker, I think. If I can get enough clean color on the brush, I think that's it. A little bit pinker. Then I'm going to restate that reflection there. Can really get thick with it if I want. see a few comments that I've missed. Um, Gail says, thank you so much for sharing your painting with all of us. You are excellent. Um, thank you. Annette Louise says, if I try out Prima, it goes all muddy. How do you avoid that? Is, is it something about the contrast between colors? Your contrasts are much um, brighter than mine. Well, I start off, I personally like a very high key palette. It allows me to get, sort of hit whatever color that I'm after. And um, yeah, and so the muddiness really comes from like blending all the colors together. So you don't really have that contrast in colors and values. And usually muddiness is more a problem of values, I think, than even colors. But um, really getting this, um, putting the right color and value in the right spot then um, gives it a lot more vibrancy and it won't feel quite as muddy. Got a little bit lighter up the nose here and I'm losing some of the tip of her nose so let's see if I can adjust the shape just a little bit just very slowly. I can go uh, purple or a little bit darker on the very tip here. And then I can throw in some red. So see what I'm doing is that I can go intense as I want and and put it exactly where I want and sort of in a way kind of matching the photo at least the adjustment of the photo which is the color close to the color and value structure that I want and that way it doesn't get muddy because I'm really controlling where uh, where I'm putting each color I can add more highlight more deep in the shadows if I want. Sometimes people don't go dark enough with their shadows and that can make something look muddy. So about punching up the accents a little bit and um, that's one way that you can solve the problem.
Again, I'm going to start to get a little bit thicker here. Right now I want to punch up those uh, highlights. some in my nose there but and now I'm going real pretty thick here now with the paint on the cheek really want to get that um, even a little more textural so that you you start to feel the feel the surface of her skin sometimes getting thick with the paint allows it creates a little bit of texture on the surface also instead of making small De little detail marks you can use the thickness of the paint to kind of to create that uh, illusion of texture well it's not even illusion of texture you're creating an actual texture instead of painting in a texture let's get a little more a little darker here so I'm going a little bit darker than the actual what's in the actual photo there, just to sort of create a sense of, um, what am I trying to say? A sense of um, change of direction in the cheek. Need a little bit of green in the paint there. I think a lot of times when I see people paint faces why it doesn't feel like they're getting the flesh tones right is because they're missing a lot of the cool colors that you would naturally see in someone's face the greens blues and purples they a lot of times completely omit those and not that it's wrong right or wrong but um, it does feel like it is missing something if you don't have a range of uh, colors in their flesh tones. Plus, it's just so damn beautiful when you get those in there. Um, I don't know why someone would omit those. Okay, let me see. Where am I? Uh, uh, Sabrina says, thank you for sharing your talent with us. I will be back next time you are here. Um, uh, thank you. And Catwin says, Catwin Art says, oh, I missed it. Well, you'll still be able to watch it later. Um, says, sir, please update full demo later. Yes, it will be posted to my YouTube channel. And Annette says, wonderful, thank you. So I've done this for about two and a half hours now. Um, I'm going to have a little bit of cleanup to do here on some of the brushwork. Um, but you got the general idea of how I approach this. And I will be posting the demo uh, to my YouTube channel. And I will probably be making a time-lapse uh, video or tutorial from that, too. So I'll be posting that at some point in the future. And, um, and then I'll be posting the finished artwork onto Instagram and on my Facebook pages. So you'll get to see what that looks like. And I hope to be back here next week with a new, um, new 
reference photo. If you want to see that or my future um, paintings, please, 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 um, uh, what am I just going to say? Oh, yes, please subscribe and click the notification bell and you will be notified the next time I start a live demo or post a time lapse or tutorial video to my YouTube channel. Thank you and have a great night you all and I'll see you next week.